smart punks and welcome to my channel if you've been here before welcome back this is my little platform where i turn struggling math students into maths masters i post videos weekly so subscribe and turn on the notification button if you want to know when i post any new videos so this is my first grade 10 video Woo! yeah baby i am hopefully gonna join you um, on your maths journey and help you understand and actually feel good about doing maths. Okay, so let me share with you in this video, we're going to be looking at what the difference is between rational numbers and irrational numbers, and then also teach you how to convert from a rational decimal to a rational fraction without using the calculator. So that's the focus for this specific video. And yeah, I will link worksheets in the description below if you want to know uh, or if you want to practice what i've taught in this video and um because to me i say it on all my videos it is so important that you practice even if you understand everything the learning actually only happens once you actually physically practice so you can find it in the description box below if it's not there yet please um, have a look at my youtube community page that's when i will keep you up to date on the status of that platform that i'm building um, yeah, so this is a long intro. Let me jump into the video and give you what you came for. Let's do this. All right, grade 10. So this is your lesson on algebra, specifically looking at rational and irrational numbers. Okay, so... I like to start at the very beginning before we jump into the calculations that you need to know how to do here. I would like to make sure that you understand the definition of all the words that I'll be using in this video. So, what are rational numbers? Essentially, the formal definition is that rational, rational numbers are numbers that can be written as a fraction in a form x over y, where y cannot equal to zero, because then it would be undefined, and x and y are integers. There are also decimals that have an ending, are recurring, and are terminating. So, in easy, simple terms, a rational number is essentially a number that can be written as a fraction, a over b, um, or x over y, and three types of decimals. Decimals that come to an end, decimals that are recurring, so in other words, the, the, the number repeats itself, and terminating is decimals that have a pattern. So 0 0.246810 or 0 0.1231231. All of those are rational numbers. Okay, so if we look at this, negative 25. Is negative 25 a rational or irrational number? It's a rational number because it can be written as a fraction. So we can write it as negative 25 over 1. So that means it's a, uh, that, it, that it is a rational number. Okay, so let's do a couple of a more, some more examples. So 0 0.75, is it a rational number? Yes, because it can be written as 3 over 4. Okay, then we have 1.75, is it a rational number? Yes, it can be written as 7 over 4. It is a rational number. Then we have 15 over 0, even though this looks like a fraction. Remember the definition says that y cannot equal naught. In other words, the denominator cannot equal naught. So this is undefined and is not a rational number. Okay, so this is just, I'm just trying to make sure that you understand how to identify rational numbers. Right, then, um, uh, rational decimals. So if we have a look at this, we've got 1, 5, 1, 5, 1, 5. So essentially, 0 0.15, the 1, 5 is recurring, which means it's repeating over and over. So that makes it a rational number. If I look at 0 0.65, it doesn't continue on and on and on. In other words, it comes to an end. That makes it a rational number. Okay, and then 0 0.246824, you see that there's a pattern. So that is considered a terminating um, decimal and that makes it a rational number as well. Okay, so these are just making sure that you 100% are able to um, decipher whether something is a rational number. Now, the calculation that I'm going to teach you later in this video is I'm going to show you how to go from how to convert a rational number like this into a fraction without using the calculator, okay? Because that is what you are required to know how to do. 
Okay, but before we go there, let's look at irrational numbers so that we are sure we understand what irrational numbers are. So if I look at irrational numbers, essentially irrational numbers are numbers that are not rational numbers. So they cannot be written as a fraction. And if you look at the decimals, there's no pattern in it and there's no ending. Now examples of this is a very popular number that you know about, which is pi. And if you wrote pi down in a, um, you wrote down all the decimals, you'll see that it's 3.14159254. And this continues on and on. So it doesn't end and there's no pattern. So that makes it an irrational number. Okay. Then we can look at the square root of 2. If I look at it and I actually look at the decimal version or the decimal answer of this, it means that it's an irrational number because no pattern, no ending, and nothing is recurring. Okay, now that we've looked at, now that we are clear on what a rational number is and what an irrational number is, the calculation that you must be able to do here is you must be able to show how to convert a rational number, how a, a rational decimal can be converted into the form A over B. So taking the decimal the decimal version of a value and converting it to its equivalent fraction value. Okay, so showing that it can be written as x over y or a over b, showing that it can be written as a fraction. So let's look. Show that a decimal is a rational number. So in this section, you are required to show that a decimal number can be written in the form x over y. And the question says show that 0 0.555555 um, recurring can be written as a fraction. Okay, so the steps that you need to follow here are as follows. Firstly, we're going to say let x equal the, the decimal that is given to you, right? So we'll say that x is equal to 0 0.555, dot, 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 right? Then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply x by 10, okay? And it's either, it's always going to be 10, 100, 1000, right? And the reason we want to do that is if we say 10x now, we will then end up with 5... 10x means I'm taking 10 and multiplying it by x. But remember with equations, what I do on the left side, I must do on the right side. So I've multiplied this, also multiplied by 10. So I've not, I haven't changed anything here. I've just multiplied both sides by 10. Okay? And why did we do that? The reason we did that is so that we can say, okay, what we have in step 2, we're going to subtract step 1 from step 2. Okay? So watch this. I'm going to say 10x minus x will give me 10, what 10x 10 is equal to minus what x is equal to. So take note here, I'm not changing anything. I'm literally just calculating what is 10x minus x, and then I'm calculating what is 5.555 minus 0 0.555. That is the calculation that I'm doing here. Okay? And the reason why we are doing this is so that if I simplify the left-hand side, I get 9. And if I simplify the right-hand side, I get 5. And now I'm actually able to divide both sides by 9 so that I actually end up getting the fraction 5 over 9. Right, so what did I do here? I basically took a recurring um, decimal. Then I made that recurring decimal in question x. I multiplied it by 10. And then I subtracted the second step from the first one. And then... Sorry, this is supposed to say subtract step 1 from step 2. Okay, so we're taking the second one minus the first one. And that will give us 5 over 9. So that means that 0 0.555 dot 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 in fraction form is equal to 5 over 9. Now, you can check this on your calculator. You literally can type in 0 0.555555 right till the end and then press equal to and then press the fraction button. And it should show you that it's 5 over 9. So this is a nice way to check it. However, if you are being asked this in a test, you can't just give the answer. You have to show these four steps that I've given you here. Okay, so let's do another example like that. It says show that 0 0.232323 can be written as a fraction. Right, so again, we make x equal to 0 0.232323, and now we multiply by the 10. But here, guys, what's important for you to note here is that whenever you, whatever you're going to be subtracting from each other after the decimal, the values have to follow the same order. So if I look at this, after the decimal for x, I've got 2, 3. It starts with a 2 and then goes to the 3. But if I multiply it by 10, after the comma, I have 3, 2. So this is where the 100 comes in, where you then have to say, 
a hundred x. <coughs> Sorry. So you're going to multiply this x by hundred, so that whatever you have after the comma, you see here now it's two three. So x is two three, and then a hundred x also has two three after the comma. So that means that you use those two to actually do your calculation. So when you are subtracting now, you're going to take a hundred x minus the x there, which will give you the 23.2323 minus the 0 0.23. Take note here in both of these, whenever after the comma, they start with the same value. So if after the comma you, you don't get the same value, then that means you would move to a thousand or you'd move up until you have the same value that is after the decimal. Okay, so in this case, 100 x minus x gives me 99 x and 23.233 minus 0 0.23 uh, will give you 23 and then you'll divide both sides by 99 and you end up having 23 over 99 okay so what we've done here is we've shown that 0 0.232323 is also 23 over 99 and that is that is the decimal rational number written as a fraction Okay, so this is your turn. So I'm going to give you a moment to just pause this video and attempt these two questions for me uh, based on what you've learned in this lesson. And then once you're done, unpause the video and I'll give you the answers and we can see how well you actually understood the work covered in this video. Please remember, it's very important. We have to practice maths. So at the end of all of my videos, I give you a practice exercise to just really show you and help you um, to make sure that you actually doing the questions and you know how to answer them. Okay, so pause the video now and do these questions. Okay, so let's look at the answers. So we have to identify here all of these and classify whether they are rational or irrational. Okay, so let's have a look at the table here. So here we've got the first one which was the cube root of 15. If you put it in your calculator, you'll see that it's an irrational number. 18 is a rational number because it can be written as 18 over 1. 2 over 5 is a fraction. It's written in fraction form, therefore it's rational. The 15 over 0 is not rational or irrational because anything divided by 0 is undefined. So even though this looks like a fraction, it's not a rational number, right? And then negative 36 is a rational number because it can be written as negative 36 over 1. And then 0 0.656565, this is a recurring uh, decimal, and a recurring decimal falls under rational numbers. So, it, you had irrational, rational, rational, and then none, rational, and rational. So, hopefully you got all of those correct, and that you are able to perfectly identify rational numbers from irrational numbers, and any other number. Okay, now let's look at 2.1. So, we had to convert 0 0.565656, okay? Let's just, let me just check there. Yes. Okay, so then you had to multiply it by 10, and you would have noticed that you would then have 6, 5 after the comma. So you'd have to multiply it by 100 as well, and then it would give you the 5, 6 afterwards. Then you would subtract it from each other, and you'll end up with 99x equals to 56, and then you'll say 56 divided by 99, and that is your fraction equivalent. Okay, let's look at the next one. This one I gave specifically gave you... Because I wanted to show you that here you'd actually have to do the 1000x. Okay, so let's look at this. We have 0 point and then it starts with 3, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1. Then we multiplied by 10. We found out that after the comma it's 2, 1, 3. If you multiply by 100 after the comma is 1, 3, 2. We are looking for 3, 2, 1. So if you multiply by 1000, then after the comma we only have 3, 2, 1. Now that we have that, now we can subtract from each other and we end up having 999 is equal to 321, divide both sides by 99, and your final fraction is then 107 over 333. And that is your answer to these questions. And hopefully you got them all right. If you didn't, don't be discouraged. The idea is to identify where you're making your mistakes so that you're actually able to improve them and actually make sure that you don't make the mistakes in tests or in other places where the marks count. Okay. So, that's the end of this video. All right, pretend, so there's that video. Hopefully you find it helpful and that you completely understand 
you know, the difference between rational and irrational numbers. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please add it in the comment section below. If you have any recommendation for future videos, you can also add that in the comment section below. Yes, and be sure to check out my worksheet that you can practice the work that we've covered in this uh, video. And yeah, I will then hopefully see you in the next video. Thank you for watching, guys. Goodbye.